Right, gentlemen, internal fireplace. So I really want to really brush down this mortar color. I don't like the dark gray mortar color sticking out. So to go over the stone, I did a little touch of white cement. Let's talk about this detail what we're going through now. So what I've decided to do is do a pair with returns of 100 mil each time. So we stagger, stagger, stagger back. Now, what I like about these piers when they're going up, it gives it a fantastic detail. Now, most of all, the bulkiness of the pier is taken away because of the step-ins here. So although you're in a big front room, you, you don't want too big, well, I didn't want two big bowling piers coming right at you. So what we've got is the same size pier, but with steps are in. And it gives you that character. So when you're looking in, the light will still come in and the, the piers won't absorb the room space. And that's the most important thing here. Right, how she's bonded. I see a lot of stuff on Instagram, straight gobbing all the time. No, how it works, stretcher, 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 back. Then on return, header, 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 stretcher. Okay, but I'll go through it any And then we have another stretcher. Into there. So she's all bonded in correctly, okay? Now I'm gonna leave this one in here because look at the big gap on it. It'll give it a feature. Because of the stocks, it's important we keep the character of what we're doing. And it's a fireplace, remember? Nothing better than seeing an old fireplace. Did it, did it, and then you finish the, the run with a stretcher, which is important. Now with this, there's so many plumbing points and leveling points is ridiculous but you've only got one side you can really level from. Because obviously the back side is gonna push out quite a lot because of the inconsistency of the bricks. But it is what it is, you know? So let's just have a little check. This is what I call precision check. Just keep on them as she's going in and then I overall the level. She's a good one. She looked a little bit high here. Good. Now, I want to keep the angle severe. Make sure I've got my 90 spot on. So she's all in line. Let's have a little look. Oh, a little bit discrepancy there. Then we go across the other way. She's a good one. Now plumbing is going to be very awkward for these, as we know, because stocks are a fucker anyway, let alone fucking name normal. But we keep them in the ballpark, and that's the most important thing here. So now, the bomb goes over the top, in reverse. So, watch. Costing the fortune these piers is white cement, I tell you. A lot of work, you know, a lot of material. Use my little double air chest, keep it all moving. Right, so now it's reverse, it's a header. So, what's there? We're going over the last stretcher with the header. So she's all bonded in. None of this just stack bonded. Straight bloody gob joints. Who, who taught you that in college? <laughs> Fuming. So the next one will be a header. So we just perk her up there. Straighten that one up first, Dino. What's the matter with you? Whoop. Some of these brick sizes are a joke. The next one again 
Here's a header. Then on the back side is a head up. Shush, sorry. Yeah, head up, sorry. Shush, head up, shush, head up. And she goes straight in. Right, now what I'll do is I have a level up precision again before I put this bat on. Just a little, make sure she's in the ballpark. That's important. Don't be sitting there and your glass of brandy, realising that of it's on the fucking Oliver, which can happen as you know, especially these real place. I'm just sighting this plumbing line through as you can see.
So an experienced bricklayer will feel my pain. Doing this detail with stocks is really hard because the stocks are so inconsistent. So you have to empathize. We have to, you, you can't beat yourself up on this, guys, yeah? You, you let your eye be your guide on this. A lot of sighting and be forgiving. Okay, so let's check the plumbing points here. So we've got a level across there. Now let's spin the camera around. So she's level there. Let's check the angles, the important bit. She's spot on there, okay? Now let's check the plumbing points. This is a good example. So she's a little hard there, not too bad. I could probably bring her over. And she's a little hard that I could probably bring her over as such. But this is the this is the situation. So as I was saying, by bringing this side over completely plumb, bringing her over, it will make this side so inconsistent. You can see the inconsistency of the bricks there. And I'm picking them by the eye as well. Some are really bad. But let's not forget the character. So by leaning this over more, it's going to show more of a shark tooth in there. So... Your experience really kicks in here. There, there, there's, there's nothing you can, no one can teach you this. Only years and years of land stocks will get you through this situation. Because sometimes you've got to look by the eye and not by the bubble, okay? Um, when using these inconsistent materials. So, listen, the rain's starting to come down a bit. I'm going to get covered up. I've got a bar full of muck. And that white cement is expensive and I'm not wasting it. So, see you in a bit.
more importantly, it just goes to show you in the Victorian times, they didn't have the lasers. They didn't have what you have today. Do you know what I mean? It was all done by man, right? And the degree and the turning of it, I'm telling you, absolutely skillful. Uh, you know, unappreciated the way we've tried to water out the trade in today's game. Um, have a think about that, because in my book I write about how we was one of the highest occupations, paid occupations, okay? And it got filtered down as the years went on. And you ask yourself why. Yeah, you ask yourself why it got filtered down. Um, the skill level's just gone. Is it because we're not putting it back in, or is it because we're not capable? Or is it because, from the top, we're not being taught these days? But anyway, back on it, get your profiles up, get your square boxes up, come on, show me how many thousand bricks you can lay a day. You know, gentlemen, as a bricklayer, I really enjoy doing these traditional details, but let's not forget bricklayers, how important our odd carriers are, and in this case, my two sons, you know. Without these two providing the mortar, the bricks, the consistency, hand selecting the stocks, none of this would be possible. So that's off to them, and that's off to all your odd carriers out there. Another key detail on this, guys, when you're going internally, okay, leave yourself a brick wide, okay, what I've done with these stocks, these stocks come up bigger than 225, obviously, uh, sorry, 215, they come up around about 230 in length, I left 280 from the interior wall, okay, the internal wall, now the reason for this, you've got your, your 12 mil plaster balls, your adhesive or your bonding and plaster, exact, uh, whatever, what you don't want is your finish coming over the brickwork, you want your brickwork exposed. So now I've got a nice ball coming over here and it exposed a nice neat 10 mil joint going right the way up. By the time it's balled or plastered, I don't know what you want to call it. You've still got a nice 10 mil joint and your brickwork's fully exposed. If you go too tight into the block work, your plaster ball will come over the, the uh, brickwork, okay? And it's not a good look. So remember that when you're starting off. Good, so. How to set this out, I don't want to go into too much detail guys, now, the reason for being this is because tumbling is the most difficult piece of work you can do as a bricklayer or as a craftsman, okay? Um, I want to show you little bits because what I don't want to do is everyone running off thinking they can tumble in because it is really hard. Um, fortunately, I was taught by my peers, some great men who have passed. Uh, who are still alive, retired, you know, and I was lucky enough to be in a generation where we've done a lot of this work, um, especially up London. Um, now, first things first, guys, know the difference between a buttress and tumbling in, okay? Um, a buttress is normally used for support on walls coming in, pier structures at an angle, okay? Tumbling in is a different structure of strength from the brickwork, okay? 
and also adds as a feature. Now what I'm gonna do is just go through the basics on this to give you some sort of insight, you know, to sort of make your knowledge a little bit greater than what it is. Right, so what we've done is when we took the piers up, we took the outside measurement from the outside pier to the other pier, okay? And then we divided it by two. So we got our center mark, which was somewhere here on this sleeper, okay? Then we plumbed the center mark right up to the top. Now, the degree of the tumbling in is vital. You don't want too much, okay? So what I always was taught was this. Plumb your line up, okay? Set your bricks out on the top, string your line down, stand back, let your eye be your guide, have a little look. Now on this scenario here, what I've done was we've done three. Because four bricks would have took us too wide, it wouldn't have been enough for the detail to fall in. Three bricks for me on this distance over, what, 25 course was fantastic, right? So get your center line, get your three bricks, measure out, and then put your profiles each end of your three bricks. Okay, as you can see, one, two, three, we're finished. Put a false joint in there just to keep it bond. Right. Angle your lines down, so again, to the edge of the pier, okay? And then just bring it in, bring it in, okay, simple. Right, you normally go three quarters of tumbling, then your brickwork. So here, as you can see, what we've got, one and a half, uh, sorry, two brick tumble. So one, two, three, and you can see how we run the bond in the stretch of course. Then I reduce it to one and a bit, one, two, three. Then you three calls, then back to two calls. One, two, three, to two stretches, okay? Now, basically, on your starting point, you go four, because you've got the first angle cut. So one, two, three, four. Then it's one, two, three at one brick. One, two, three at two brick. One, two, three at one brick. One, two, three at two brick. And vice versa, okay? Now, like I said, this is exceptionally difficult, okay? I know you see a lot of videos online promoting stuff, and doing it slow. My theory on this, you need to be taught correctly. Um, in my book on mine at the moment, I talk about these details because it's the internet is good, you can pick up ideas and stuff, but you all need knowledge, okay? And this should be taught to you. Now, if you haven't been taught and you're enthusiastic and your enthusiasm is great, you want to learn, then research it. You can even send me messages privately and, and I'll help you out to set it out. Now, the setting out on this is important, guys, from the start to the finish. Don't rush, okay, because it forms the character. If you rush it, you can get it wrong. I've done a mistake earlier. We tumbled in uh, one and a bit here, and it didn't look like it almost gave me a straight joint now. So I jumped down, had a little look, Bob recorrected it. Right, as it goes up, don't be scared of bringing one in, because you want to maintain this stretch of course, okay? You want to maintain the stretch of course. See how it's finishing, it's vital. Now, your cut on the tumble always come into the stretch up, and the cut on the stretch up always come in to the tumble, okay? So guys, listen, thank you for watching. Um, another little bit of different work on here, and I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, stay safe and have a brilliant new year, okay? Guys, God bless. amazing with this is the science you know how the weight is suspended through the degree of the arch and holds it
Tech. So what I'm doing is preparing the back plate of the fire. Um, I'm going to go for a Victorian setting, so I'm having some ceramic tiles made um, with a flora design to match the look of the fireplace. Now, when it's all done, I'll upload a video of me installing the tiles, but I won't do the tiles until the whole build is watertight. Join me here on a rainy day. <laughs> Guys, listen, I just want to tip me out to all those who sent me DMs complimenting me on the stack internally and externally. It's so complimenting, guys. Listen, every day as bricklayers, we get up, we do our best, okay, to provide for families, etc., and do craftsmanship. Now, for it to be recognised and a few nice words and you guys taking your time to send over messages is incredible. Um, it's hard to get back to everyone. Literally every five, 10 minutes of DMs coming in. There's literally hundreds of them. But I'm so uh, humbled by it all, guys, and grateful. Listen, thank you all so much. And I'm very pleased that I'm able to put some work up and inspire some people. 
you know, uh, and show you bricklayers that what we are all about, why we do the trade, okay, we're craftsmanship, we're fucking geniuses. So guys, God bless, have a good Saturday.